Here in this video we will showcase 20 titans of the past that went extinct and compare them with their closest living relatives, the modern day species that share a lineage with them, their living cousins. Let's get to it. We begin with the Ngangdong Tiger, Panthera tigris soloensis. This creature prowled the Pleistocene jungles of Java around 50,000 years ago. This formidable predator became extinct due to climate changes and competition with humans. Its closest living kin, the Siberian Tiger or Panthera tigris alteca, still roams the forests of Russia and northeastern China and is the largest feline species alive today. Then next we have the Elephant Bird or Apiaronis maximus. This was a colossal flightless bird native to Madagascar. Weighing up to 1100 pounds, it stood 10 feet tall and laid eggs larger than basketballs. These giants went extinct roughly 1000 years ago, likely due to human hunting and habitat loss. Surprisingly, their closest relative today is the tiny nocturnal kiwi or the apteryx found in New Zealand. Next we have the Archelon which was a massive late Cretaceous sea turtle, the biggest turtle ever, with shells over 13 feet long. It went extinct around 74 million years ago and as to why, well, predation, changes in climate and sea conditions might have a say in it. Today's leatherback turtle, the Dermochelus coriace, is the largest living turtle and still carries its ancient heritage in oceanic waters. Then we come to the Arctotherium angustidens, which was a massive short-faced bear from South America living during the Pleistocene epoch until around 10,000 years ago. It was one of the largest bears ever known, potentially weighing over 3,500 pounds. Today's polar bear Ursus maritimus is the largest modern relative, adapting to the Arctic icy environment rather than the temperate plains of its ancestor. Then going to Australia, we have the Protodon, which was the largest marsupial ever and resembles a massive wombat. It lived in Australia until about 40,000 years ago. Today's marsupials of Australia, the koalas and more notably, also the wombats which belong to the genus Vombatus and Lasiorinus are much smaller but still show their similarities to their ancient relative. Then next we have the Dodicarus, which was a heavily armored car-sized Glyptodon that lived in South America during the Pleistocene epoch until about 7,000 years ago. Its spiked tail likely provided defense against predators as well as its shell. Today its closest relative is the much smaller giant armadillo or the Priodontis maximus which lives a quieter life digging through forests and savannas. Now going over to primates, or more specifically the great apes, we have the Gigantopithecus blackie. This was a gigantic ape, the biggest ape to ever live, and lived in Asia over 30,000 years ago, standing nearly 10 feet tall or 3 meters, and fed likely on bamboo in forested habitats. Its relatives today are the great apes and the largest of all are, of course, us homo sapiens. And while on average we are much smaller, there are giants like Robert Wadlow who died in 1940 reaching a height of 8 feet 11 inches or almost 9 feet tall, reminding us of what is possible. Then next going over to the reptiles, we have Megalania prisca, which was a gigantic monitor lizard from the Pleistocene epoch in Australia, growing over 20 feet long. This apex predator prowled the land until about 50,000 years ago when it disappeared, likely due to human activity and environmental shifts. Its modern cousin, the Komodo dragon or Varanus komodoensis, is a powerful reminder of what the ancient monitors might have been like. Back to mammals, we have the Megaloceros giganteus or also known as the Irish elk and was a gigantic deer with antlers spanning 11 feet wide. It roamed Eurasia until around 7,700 years ago. Its closest living relative, the Roosevelt elk, might not have such massive antlers but is still an impressive member of the deer family. Then going over to the waters again, we have the Otodus Megalodon and this was the ultimate predator of the oceans, dominating the seas during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs from 23 to 3.6 million years ago. This gigantic shark reached lengths of up to 60 feet and preyed on whales. Today's short fin maku sharks, while significantly smaller, still carries the lineage of these legendary hunters with their incredible speed and predatory skill. We are flip flopping between the ocean and the land. So back to the land we have the Megatherium americanum and this was an enormous ground slot from South America standing over 14 feet tall when rearing on its hind legs and measuring 20 feet long. It went extinct around 10,000 years ago, likely hunted by humans to extinction. Its modern kin, the biggest one is the Linnaeus two-toed sloth and it is far smaller around 2 to 3 feet and also arboreal but still retains that relaxed sloth demeanor. 
Then back to the waters again, we have the Mosasaurus which was a massive marine reptile that dominated the late Cretaceous seas around 66 million years ago, growing up to 56 feet long or 17 meters. It was the top predator there, capable of taking down anything in the watery domain including other dinosaurs. While this animal lived 66 million years ago and doesn't really have a direct descendant, it does belong to a group of animals called the Squamata, which are reptiles, and a modern marine iguana basking on the Galapagos Islands is a much humble swimmer but shares a distant lineage with its ancient squamate. Back on land we have the Paleoloxodon antiquus which was the biggest elephant species that ever lived and roamed Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene epoch going extinct till around 13,000 years ago. Towering at over 15 feet tall, it was larger than any elephant today. Its modern cousin, the African elephant, the Loxodonta africana, is the biggest elephant species still living and still carries the majestic spirit of its enormous forebearer. Then we also have the Paraceratherium, also known as the Indrocothere, and was the largest land mammal ever, standing 18 feet tall at the shoulder, or around 15 to 16 on average, although this spot is contended with large specimens of the Paleodoxodon species. This hornless rhino, the Paraceratherium, vanished around 23 million years ago, but its modern kin, while not directly a descendant of them, still a relative, the white rhinoceros still lives on as one of the biggest land mammals in the world today. Heading over to the skies, we have Pelagonus sandesi which was a gigantic seabird living in the Miocene epoch, boasting wingspans of up to 24 feet wide, the largest of any known bird, alive or dead. It glided over ancient oceans, likely hunting fish, until around 2.5 million years ago when it went extinct. The great albatrosses of today, with still impressive 11 feet wingspans, still soar over the skies in a similar fashion, and also in similar habitats. And the lower part of that habitat is also home to the Parasitus Colossus, which was an enormous toothed whale from the Miocene epoch, living around 39 to 38 million years ago. It likely weighed around 60 to 180 tons and could rival modern whales in size. Unlike its current living cousin, the toothed sperm whale, which dives deep for squid, this leviathan, the Parasitus, might have cruised the shallows. Sadly, we know it only through rare fragments of fossilized bones, and much of it is still a mystery. Living in a similar habitat, but in the Cretaceous about 112 million years ago, we have a species known as the Supercroc, or the Sarcosuchus imperator, which was an enormous relative of today's crocodiles measuring up to 12 meters or 40 feet long. It terrorized rivers and lakes, preying on dinosaurs and large fish. Its closest modern equivalent, the saltwater crocodile, or the salte, might not be as massive, but still carries on the legacy of apex ambush hunting that was iconic to crocodiles in every generation. Another aquatic giant, a species called Hydrodamalus gigas or the stellar sea cow, was a gentle marine animal from the North Pacific and reached more than 20 feet in length or 6 meters. Sadly, it was hunted to extinction until quite recently, till about 1768. It was closely related to another Cyrenian species called the dugong, which fortunately is under protection and now freely lives in the aquatic environments near the coastlines. The second last animal here in this list is the Titanoboa kerahonensis, and this was the largest snake to ever have lived. Slithering through the tropical swamps of Colombia during the Paleocene epoch about 58 million years ago, reaching lengths of over 40 feet long, but was still an ambush predator, which highlights how dense the jungles were back then. Today's green anaconda is much smaller but still impressively massive, continuing the reign of large constrictors in South America. Then last of all we have the Titanotylopus, which is a giant camel from the Pleistocene epoch. It was a titan indeed and lived in North America and went extinct till about 10,000 years ago. Today's dromedary camel and the Bactrian camels are its closest relatives. The dromedary camel, more precisely with its one hump and desert adaptations, carries forward the Titanotylopus lineage. And yeah, for notable mentions, we can also say the dinosaurs from the Mesozoic era have their closest living relatives as the birds, the avian birds. But then again, the avian species uh, broke off from the evolutionary chain around the Jurassic period or the early Cretaceous period. So do they really count? And that is why we didn't put dinosaurs here in this list. But the Mosasaurus, for example, do belong to the Squamata order, along with the lizards and snakes, so it does have 
a close living relative. Anyway, with that we come to the end of the video. Do hit that like button for support and subscribe if you haven't. Till the next time, take care fam.